Hello, welcome to another Earth Engine tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to search Earth Engine API and um, how to import um, data from your uh, personal Earth Engine account into Jupyter Notebook. So uh, let's get started. First, you need to install the GMAP Python package. Uh, if you have not done this before, you can watch my uh, previous tutorials on how to install this one and um, then you can watch um, the previous um, tutorial how to import a Python script into Jupyter Notebook um, because um, we're using the same function um, I'm going to show you uh, uh, shortly and so once you install the package then you can use uh, um, activate the contact environment and then type Jupyter Notebook to uh, start a Jupyter notebook on your browser and let me maximize and so for today we are going to use the examples under the notebooks folder um, by the way you can download the entire folder as a zip file from my github account and then um, open Jupyter notebook so we're going to use this one uh, 23 import uh, assets so once it's open, uh, you can see here we only have a few lines to call and I'm going to show you um, what we are trying to achieve. So essentially, if you go to your um, login to your Google Earth Engine account, right, you have uh, scripts. So this is the one that we cover in the uh, tutorial uh, number 22. And uh, so for this video, we are going to cover these two uh, documents and uh, assets. So these are the two um, the functions we're gonna I'm gonna show you, and um, so in the in here you will see that we have a lot of um, API documentation. So if you're not sure some of the parameters or the function, then you can always come here to take a look. But there's no such thing in the uh, Python API, so um, it's very uh, inconvenient that sometimes you have to switch back and forth in order to find out some of these API so that's why I implement uh, this one in uh, the, the GMAP Python package so that you don't have to switch uh, in here so let me quickly show you uh, what we are trying to do if you in here this is the entire list but you can also uh, search from the Earth Engine API documentation without having to log into your account right so if you go to or the uh, documentation platforms and then documentation then we come here but you have to click the the reference tab so from here once you click um because i think it has 1600 uh, functions so it's going to take a long time to log and we see from the list in here um, this is a very very long list that you can see from here and essentially how I implement this one in Jupyter Notebook or in Python is that I need to uh, scrapping all the information on this page. So if you right click and then from here, view uh, page source. And this is how uh, I use Python to do the scrapping. So if you scroll down to the to the end, this is where it get all started. So these are all HTML. Uh, source code from the very beginning uh, title and description so I can show you the source code if you are interested in so if you come back to here um, gmap and then gmap.py and the name of the function is called you can hit control F and then this uh, e -E API e API to CSV so this is the function that's used to um, read the HTML. So from here, the link, and then you see how it's going to save as a CSV. So this is the, the website um, to this one. And then you automatically uh, grab all the contents in the end, save as a CSV. And then we can use the CSV to um, build the um, table content. Um, so let's just get started. You will see quickly. So first we need to import the, these three packages and then I'm going to call this function ee.api to CSV. 
and I'm going to save this one to the downloads folder. So if you see from right now in here, that downloads folder um, is empty. So we set the folder in the output file, and all we need to do is execute. And it's only just take a few seconds. Okay, so now we have the CSP. All we need to just double click, and please make sure that you only check the the tab are separated. Don't use the comma because um, there are lots of commas in the description for each function. So you don't you you don't want to use comma. So it must be tab separated, and then just see okay. In here you should see the the CSV. So for each one, right? This is the the name of the function and the description, and also the function with all the parameters. And the next one is what's being written, and also the arguments um, being separated by the uh, pipe operator, and also the data type for each one. So. Essentially, if you come back to the API documentation here, right? So this is the, the title, and this is the name of the, the function format, and this is the uh, each function, uh, the parameters and the type, and also the description. So, and read all of this into um, this CSV. Then we can use the CSV to construct um, the uh, API documentation. So let's come back to this one and go back to this one here. I'm just showing you how to use this function, but uh, actually you don't have to. You can just delete this one. Uh, it will work just fine. So, and next, let's um, create a map first. And then from the map, uh, now we you can call this function gmap.e uh, search. I don't know why uh, the base map right now is showing not correctly. Anyway, so let's execute this function. And um, it, it, take, take, it might take a few seconds. So here, the first tab is the scripts tab. And this is the second one we are going to introduce here. So this one, um, are you gonna, because there are too many functions. so. Um, it might take a couple seconds. It depends on your computer. Uh, let me go back to this one here. So essentially, we're going to get the same thing like this one in here. Um, it says it's loading. So the first time, it, it, it's, it's slow the first time, but uh, when you click again, it's going to be pretty quick. So I can show you when you click and hit those again. Um, it's, it's, because the tree is already constructed, so and now we can just click. And for example, you can click to see any of those. So, for example, for the first one, um, or the second one, collection, or anything you like. And if we come back to see this one in here, like the first one, and this one in here, so all the information. So now you have the same thing within Jupyter Noble without having to. Um, switch to the JavaScript code editor. So you can do everything in here within um, Jupyter Notebook. So you can search anything, right? You can click any. I think the total is, I think, six, 1,600 functions. So it's a lot. You can also do the filter, just like what you see in here, right? So, for example, if I'm interested in uh, support vector machine, uh, I know this, uh, the name called SVM. And then you want to have these two functions in here. So similarly, you can do this one here, SVM, you enter, and then you can click. Uh, it should show you the same thing that you see from the code here. I can remove, enter again. Then it's going to show the uh, entire uh, tree. OK, that's pretty much um, this documentation so it's very handy uh, when you do the coding um, you can directly um, just use the function to uh, show this documentation the next one i'm going to show you is this button here assets so uh, again um, it's going to take some time depends on how many um, data set you have in your account um, for me i have um, i think a couple thousand so it's going to take a while but let me show you come back 
uh, in here access tabs right so these are some of the data set and it is going to go through your entire account and to wrap the data so let me come back in here you see um, it's finished but first i want to show you uh, if you click this function put your cursor inside the function and then on your keyboard hit the uh, shift and tap you should be able to see that there's a parameter called access limit uh, equal to 100 and if you click this one in here uh, this actually means that the default number of uh, assets to display for each type because in the um, assets in here we have either image and uh, also freezer collection so this is basically raster vector but you might also have some um, image collection so there are three types and if I show you in here I, I my account has number as is four thousand and six hundred so just a lot and uh, sometimes I don't need that many but if you construct a directory for all the data it's going to be very slow so that's why I provide a parameter in here um, default to just 100 so by default it's only going to show you 100 images 100 feature collection and 100 um, image collection so you see here some of these in in here are empty because um there are too many at the top in here so but you are welcome to change the parameter to for example assets um, limit equal to maybe 1000 or, 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 or 200 depending on how many you have so and then once you have this one i can quickly for example just so i can click any assets on the right panel in here you will see this is the essentially the freezer collection so this is the unique id because uh, i just could not remember to, like the entire like the id so every time if i doing coding here within jupyter notebook in the past i have to um went back to uh, the co editor and then i need to come back to here to for example to take a look and to see this one and then to here to copy this id and come back to here to paste into here so it's not very convenient now you can directly uh, show it in here and all you need to do is just hit the import button so once you hit the import it's going to create the python script in here and this is the name so it's going to call dataset underscore and three random uh, characters so this depends on um every time it's going to be different and then this is the line coming from here import then i add this one um, to the map okay so this is the name and this is the uh, symbology you want to use this is the layer name it is going to show under the layer control and all you need to do is hit run then come back to here uh, you should see this one in here right so this is the uh, official collection so it, it, it's a, a vector data and they show it in here but you can also add other data types so the for the um, vector data you will see this one is just like a table so it's a freezer collection but there are also some other data sets just like image so this would be image collection just like the file icon and um, so if you you can check this one in here for example uh, another data set so this image icon so this one is the uh, Earth engine image. This one is freezer collection, and let's try this one. Uh, LiDAR three meter. So again, you will see here on the right, right, and this is the ID. You see import, and then come here. You will generate this one. All I need to do hit run. Then you should have this one. Uh, it's under here. Right. And by and, and by the way, you can use the inspector. To inspect the values right the pixel values uh it's all white because we need to change the symbology so if you like you can come back to here and i can change for example the minimum to 300 and then maybe the maximum to 700 um and execute again so we can come back in here right 
and now you have the DM. Um, you 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 can create um, based on the DM. You can do, for example, huge rate or something else. No, let's try this one. Add a new sale below. I can get a huge rate equal to e dog. I think it's called under the terrain, right? So if you come back to the documentation and uh, so it should be under the uh, terrain in here. You see it, it's a bit slow and terrain. So there's a function called hue shape. And from this function, you will see uh, the first one input and the other two uh, using the default. So we don't need to provide or we need just to know that uh, there's a function called e.hue.terrain, hit tab, dot hue shape, right? And then we can pass in the data set. So this is the one we, the DM we use. And then all we need to do is map dot add layer and then use it. We don't need to customize the symbology and then we can change the name called use it. Then come back to here. Now we have to use it. Uh, for the for the DM, right? So I can uncheck the other one. So this is the one. And similarly, you can use the inspector to click to see those values, like the hue shape and the DM, because we execute twice. So you only see two layers uh, in here. Anything? Let me see. Also, by the way, you can um, use the assays. You can also do filter uh, similar to uh, the documentation. You can search, for example, I can search any data set um, contain the keyword code, maybe LIDAR, right? And then I can choose any of those from the list. You can also remove the keyword and hit enter again. Uh, it's going to show your entire uh, exit directory. Okay, I think that's all for this uh, tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, consider hitting the like button and um, subscribe to my channel. You can also leave a comment down there. I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.